Got to watch for traffic up here. Uh, 5.30 this afternoon, and then tomorrow, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 6.30. And uh, we'll meet in here. We'll have a lot of fun. Bubba is uh, not like anything you've seen before, at least in our pulpit. At least. So I want to remind you that there'll be some, we will have a great time. <laughs> we'll have a good time. I'm trying to think of what other adjective I can use. He's an oval. Um, just make sure, I want to make sure, you know, uh, Josh and Allison, this is our last Sunday with us. Oh, they're loading yeah. yeah. the new halls this week. This week. And, uh, and they'll be taking off next, or this coming Saturday. And so if you can be of any help to them, call them first, because you've got to find them. And, uh, and then they can use your help. Uh, but also make sure if you have, if you want to say goodbye to them, love on them and hug them, uh, just so that you know the time frame. And, uh, and we do I want to bring it up for another reason, too. This last Thursday was his last youth group meeting, right? Are you doing no, this? We'll be here. Though. You're going to be on this one? Okay. Well, last week was kind of special. They had a pool party. And uh, while they were there, they, they had a baptism. And, and I want to tell you a story. Uh, this guy got saved at World Changers. And when he heard that, that Josh was leaving and put in his resignation, he called Josh up and says, Well, I'd like you to baptize me before you go. And Josh thought for a minute and said, No, wait a minute, you have to be saved first. He says, Yeah, I got saved. And Josh said, When? He said, At World Changers. <laughs> And Josh says, why didn't you tell me? He says, I was supposed to tell somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, so Nehemiah was one that got saved and baptized his last <laughs> year. <laughs> 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. I, he, he did tell his mom and dad when he got home. So <laughs> that was good. Um, I, I got one other special thing to share with you right now. I need to remind you, a few weeks ago, uh, we passed out this information on the new parking lot. Uh, and we decided as a church that we're going to pay uh, all of the property we have all the way back to 12th Street. And, uh, and I, I shared with you some financial facts uh, that the cost of the parking lot was going to be $174,000. And, and that's a great blessing in itself because... We were expecting to be over 250000 just a year or so ago. And so now 174000 We have uh, 149000 in our building fund. And uh, are, are we, I can show you a little bitty, little illustration of this announcement. I would if something would come on there. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> Not that one. Not that one. Yeah, there we go. Just take a look at that for a moment. Here's what happened. This last week, uh, someone came into my office and said that God had been speaking to them. And that God had provided for their family in a very special way and wrote a check for $24,000. $25,000, so it's all paid in full. Oh, God is so faithful, isn't he? Amen. Uh, I, I, I would love to tell you the testimony about all of it. They want to keep it anonymous, and so I appreciate that. Amen. But let me tell you this. The part of the testimony that I can tell you, that God started planting the seeds to pay off that balance for us. Before we before we even start the parking lot, it's all faithful. God started the arrangements for that 25 years ago. Wow. Isn't that awesome how God does it? He can plan 25 years ago until right now and bring it to pass at his perfect timing. And we get to be a part of it. We get to see how God did that. And so uh, I just wanted to praise the Lord with you today and let you know that as we go through this revival meeting this week, we don't have to worry about paying a balance off. It's already taken care of. But then God, you know, he always tends to do things in kind of an overflow kind of manner. Well, there have been some other gifts, so now we actually have $5,000 seed money in up for our new building yeah. that we would put in when God provides enough for that. So uh, I, I just praise the Lord, and I thank God for it. Uh, we got a little traffic going on because we invited the Children's Church to come in to our service today. Yay. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and so things will be a, a little more exciting. Uh, if you're a first-time guest, Pastor Leroy back there has some gifts for you. 
He's got a book. He's got an ink pen and a bookmark he wants to give to you. And inside of there is also one of these cards. Or you can find one of these in the seat pocket in front of you. We would like to have you fill one of these out if you're a first-time guest and put it in the offering plate later in the service so that we know about you being here today and we can send you a little more information about us so that we can get to know each other. So we're glad that you're here today. And uh, like I said, fill that out, put it in the offering plate later. Also, you can use that for prayer requests or even your response if you want to share with us how God spoke to you today. Through Brother Bubba sharing the word, you can uh, let us know through those communication cards. So let's take a, a very uh, short moment. I don't want. Well, let's stand together, greet one another, and then we're going to give some hands Then bring you back some scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> Yes. 
And so I can keep my eye on time. All you people that are under four feet tall in here, you're going to have to help us out. Every once in a while, we remember that we grew up and they forget we it's okay to clap in church. Amen. You guys can help us. Remember this. You're just right there, darling. Have you been to
What's in your name? We pray these things this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, how y'all doing this morning? Morning. Now, folks, listen here. The last group, I do believe, is an older group. <laughs> and they got more fire than y'all do. So, how y'all doing this morning? Come on now. And this is time, right? That's time, right? Brother, I thought that's the comment I made to the last one. That you would shut up. <laughs> no, but you took just as much time, if not more, this time. Hallelujah. Is it because that we're not hurried? Exactly. I mean, you know, there's only three seasons with football games on. And if you want to watch it, you can take them. Amen? Amen. Those staff so, did a great job. Thank you. Y'all give them a hand now. Come on. Monday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Because you're going to see something different every night. But I will play in on this. On Monday night, I'm going to put my 198 pound body inside that balloon there. And I'm going to freak from inside the balloon. And the good part about that is you can hear me, but you don't got to look at me, yeah, yeah. And then on Wednesday night, for the grand finale, after it's all said and done, we will put my 198-pound body inside that balloon, and we'll put kids inside there with me. The record is 45 and me. So we'll do that right in here. Now, sometimes you get 10 in it pop. Sometimes you get 15 in it pop. I mean, only God knows, amen? Amen. How many of you have never seen anybody inside a balloon before right now? Well, you're in for a treat, amen? <laughs> I mean, we'll have a good time. Now, Y'all do know who John Carl Davis is, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, he's my friend. And I'm his friend. I mean, that should tell you something. Now, I am not from Texas. I was born in Georgia. Went to Oklahoma in 1973 on a football scholarship. I met my Oklahoma bride there. As a matter of fact, I dated her 14 days and asked her to marry me. Five months later, we got married. We've been married 38 years. We have six children, seven grandbabies, and God is good. Amen? Amen. All the time. Amen? Amen. Yeah, y'all can clap for the Lord. It's okay to clap for the church, folks. I mean, we need to get excited about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, in our first service, the Holy Spirit moved. We had between probably 45 and 55 people who walked the aisle this morning. Amen. God bless. Amen? Amen? I mean, and if you're here for the second time, You're going to see the same thing again. But people tell me that the second time is better than the first. I don't have no idea. But let me flip in my Bible here. Twenty some odd years ago, I started a ministry. And uh, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to be like that weird preacher out there. I want to be that odd duck in the pond. And I'm that odd duck in the pond. Amen. Now, pastor here will use sermon illustrations or sermon points. I use object lessons. And I'll tell you why I do that is because that's what God did. Now, you can argue with me about that, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> In the Old Testament, the Lord used a girdle, pottery, an abandoned baby, two sisters, a bullet pot, a basket of fruit, fire, bloodline, gourd, worm, and a lie, just to name a few. And I can add more to that. And then in the New Testament, he used a little child, children, a gnat and a camel, a cup and a platter, a pig in a pig pen, mustard of seed, fig tree, living field, and bird in the air. Didn't make a few. So he used object lessons. So like I told the first group, I thought, well, if that's what God did, why don't I do that? So that's why I do what I do. I use object lessons. You will not go to sleep on me. <laughs> Trust me, you will not go to sleep. We are going to have a good time. But there's two questions I want you to ask yourself this morning. Are you ready to a great kid of no. Am I saved? Amen. Do you know Jesus? I mean, folks, listen. You either know him or you don't. You're either headed to heaven or you're headed to hell. There's no in between. There's no straddling the fence. So you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're either a Christian or you're not. Now, if you are a Christian, I want you to ask yourself this question. If I am saved, 
What is my relationship with Jesus like? Is your relationship with Jesus pleasing to Him? Now, it might be pleasing to you. We don't care about that. I mean, really we don't. What we care about is, is your relationship with Jesus pleasing to Him? That's the key, folks. That is the key. Is it pleasing to the Lord? Remember, folks, it's not about me. It's not about Brother Dale. It's not about Brother Ty. It's not about Sister Pat. It's about Jesus. That's what it's got to be about. Amen? Amen? Jesus wants to be number one in your heart and life. He doesn't want to be number two. He doesn't want to be number three. He wants to be number one. He is a jealous God. And that's what He wants to be. I will say this, folks. I believe if you say you're a Christian, and if you are not spending time daily reading God's Word, if you're not having a quiet time daily, there's no way you can be right with the Lord. Now, Brother Dale, if I ever say something you don't agree with, you say, oh, 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 hey, brother, that's wrong. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's important for you, even as children, to get in the habit of getting up, reading your Bible, confessing sin, asking God what you want, He wants you to do for Him throughout the day. That is the number one property before you do anything else. I refuse to leave my house. I refuse to leave Brother Al's house unless I put on God's armor. Because I know that if I don't put on God's armor, God can't use me the way he wants to. And the old devil is going to beat the crud out of me throughout the day. That's what's going to happen. So, are you saved? If you are saved, is your relationship with the Lord pleasing to him? That's what you got to ask yourself today. If you're a Christian. Now today, we're going to talk about three different kinds of people in church. Come on, Pastor. You ready? Come on, brother. Don't just sit there. Now, i got three sticks here. And we're going to... Come on, Pastor. We're going to dip when it's cold with fuel. Now, children, let me say this to you children. This is something that you should never try. Because if you do, you're going to get burnt. So do not ever try this, children. Amen? Amen. Now, if there's an adult out here that wants to learn how to do this later, I will teach you later on in the week. Pass me on that one. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> That's wrong. You said if I didn't like what you said, I didn't agree with that, I'd have to say something. Well, what is it I said you have to like? Okay, now, <laughs> the Bible says that we need to examine ourselves in... On the first day of the Bible, that's basically what we do as Christians. Because you know what? If Christians get right with the Lord, revival's going to take place. Right. So that means, Christians, you've got to allow the Lord to show you sin in your life that's unpleasing to Him, and you get rid of it. You say, now, Bubba, it just might be a white lie. Listen, a white lie is still sin to the Lord, amen? Right. I mean, just being rude a little bit is still sin to the Lord. So the Bible says to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. So today is what we're going to do, and tonight. And then we want you all to be asking and praying and seeking the Lord as who you need to bring for salvation. Amen. All right, now, three types of people in the church. The first person we want to talk about is saints. Saints. Brother, you're a saint. You got saved, you got baptized, you're a saint. You don't have to follow the Lord in baptism to be saved because Jesus is what saves you, amen? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only thing you can do to get to heaven is to know Christ. So, you're either a saint, going to heaven, or you're going to hell. I am a saint. When I was 16 years old, Bristol Baptist Church was in Georgia, I walked the aisle, confessed that I was a sinner, told the Lord I needed him, asked him to come into my heart, asked him to save me, and he did. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter if you're red, yellow, black, and white. If you want to be saved, you can be. I think we're by accepting Jesus. So you're a saint going to heaven, or, are you ready for this one? An ain't going to hell. You're a saint going to heaven, or an ain't going to hell. Listen, Jesus died for the ain't. Amen. Amen. Now, the third person, that person there is the one who does more damage to the kingdom of God than anybody. That is the saint that look like ants. Y'all come to church on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, but on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
you live like the devil. You don't read your Bible. You enjoy sin. Isn't sin enjoyable? You know, sin looks good, feels good, tastes good, smells good. That's why we sin, amen? So, you've got your saints who are on fire from the Lord. You've got your ain't who aren't on fire. And you've got your saints who look like ain't who aren't on fire either because they don't read the Bible, confess, and pray. Let me show you how it's going to work. The Bible says this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill could not be hidden. We have to look different. See the difference? Look. On fire for the Lord. But sometimes even Christians allow a sin to come into their life because it looks good, feels good, tastes good, smells good. And they want to hang on to it. And when that happens, our light for Jesus is left out. Oh we look like everybody else. Listen, we are not called as saints to look like everybody else. We are called to look different, amen? amen. Now, if y'all know John Carl Davis, he looked different, amen? I mean, inside, he's a big man, but I'm going to tell you something. What impresses me about the man is that he allows the love and light to shine through him. That's what sets John Carl apart. That's what sets the preacher apart. That's what sets many Christians apart. So, we are to tell others about Jesus, and how do we do that? We do it with that tongue. The Bible says, to go ye into the hedges and highways and compel people to come in. In other words, you beg people to come to the house of the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, this saint is going to be on fire, and this saint is going to tell this thing about Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what this church will be doing. That ain't going to get saved. This saint is going to tell them this saint looks like an ain't. Hey, brother, hey, sister, in love, not being mean. What you're doing is wrong. What you're saying is wrong. The way you're acting, you're not acting like a Christian, is wrong. And the Lord is going to use them to convict that person, make that person feel bad, and they're going to confess that sin and get right to the Lord. Amen. All right, here's how it works. Ready, Pastor? Remember how? Here you go. <laughs> Hey, Pat, you gotta be faster than that now. <laughs> slow. <laughs> what are you put the lid on for, Pat? <laughs> you gotta light it fast, preacher. Yeah, wait. What really matters is you didn't light it on fire anyway. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I was the holder, you were the fire. You gotta put it over here, bro. He didn't do it behind closed doors, did he? He didn't do it behind drawn curtains, did he? 
He did it publicly. And if he did that to you, surely you can let folks know when you've gotten right with him. So that's what we expect. Today, God is going to do a miracle in some of your lives. And I'm going to do one very quickly. I want you to watch. I'm going to take these two glasses. I'm going to put those two right there on the end of the table. Just like that. Put this one right here by those two. Watch very carefully because you know you might want to try this at home. And if you don't do it right, you're going to make a mess. I'm going to fill that up about halfway. This one up about halfway. And this one up about halfway. If you're with me, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you love the Lord, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to take this cake pan and put it on top of the glass. I've got three toilet paper rolls from Houston, Texas. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing with you that I did with the last group. I'm going to come out there with some of you and look at you through the toilet paper roll. If you don't smile at me, it's kissy kissy time. <laughs> No, you should wait till tomorrow night. Oh. Hey, now, the Bible says 
take you all things out and learn in these now. Don't cry. Right. Like a... and I miss. Egg on the floor, egg on the table. So I get fearful. Listen, here's what I'm trying to make. Don't let, keep, don't let fear, don't let fear keep you off from obeying the Lord. Amen. When the Lord tells you to witness somebody, don't be fearful. Just do it. When the Lord tells you to give, give what the Lord tells you. Don't be fearful. When God wants you to serve in a certain part of the church, serve. Don't be fearful. When God wants you to walk the aisle, it don't matter if you're a kid, a teenager, or an old man or old woman. Don't be fearful. Don't let fear keep you from the Lord. All right, now I'm going to do it this time. Let me just make sure that I've got it all set up. Lying is a sin, right? Lying is a sin. Amen. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to do it this time. Hang on. I'll take a minute. i get the room just right. All right, tell me. If you disobey your mom and daddy and you feel bad about it 
and you ask God to forgive you, He will. He will hear your prayer from heaven and He'll forgive you. Now, let's say that we lie. I've got a twin sister and she lies a lot. She really does. All the time, matter of fact. But, if you've ever said a lie, if you've ever told a lie, raise your hand. Get them up high. If you don't have your hands up now, you're lying. <laughs> really? What? If you've lied, here's what God wants to do with your sin. It's gone. It's gone. And when the Lord has given you sin, it's gone. He forgives. He forgives. And folks, listen. That's the way we should be. When somebody harms you, or they say something mean to you, and they come back and ask you to forgive them, you are to forgive and forget. Grudges will destroy your relationship with the Lord. That's sin. That's good enough. You see it enough? How about this one? Name calling. Hey, four rights. Hey, cat talk. Did it scare you, baby? You're all right. <laughs> hey, Patty. Hey, calling people names. You know what I used to call my wife when I got mad? I call her stupid. Hey, stupid. <laughs> really, I did. And God convicted me about that and tore my britches up. And I got right with him. I got right with her. Listen, name calling will destroy your relationship with the Lord. It destroys your relationship with other people. That little thing inside our mouth called the tongue. The same tongue we praise God with, we curse men with the Bible says. The Bible says that should not be. So, if you're a name caller, God forgive you. If you are a fusser and a fighter, especially on the way to church. <laughs> God will forgive you. Quarter kid off the table without asking mom and daddy. That's sin. Not spending time alone with God, adult. That is you stealing or robbing him of your time. Not giving to the church the way God tells you to do. That's sin. But you know what? God is gracious. He will forgive us for that. How about this? Killing someone. I have never killed anybody, you say. But have you ever done this? I hate you. The Bible says that hate is the same as murder. Hate. That's it. Don't forget it. And then the last one we got here is cheating. Cheating on a test. Teenagers. Adults. Cheating on a girlfriend, cheating on a boyfriend, cheating on a husband, cheating on a wife. You say, Bubba, I've never done that. Well, what about after your wife goes to bed at night and you go in there and turn on that computer and you pull up all these websites that have all kinds of ungodly pictures on them? That's cheating. That's cheating. You know? You're hiding sin in your heart and life. Pastor don't know, does he? I don't know, but God does. That's right. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Chris. Is your relationship pleasing to the Lord? <laughs> How about this? No quiet time. No prayer time. You don't serve the church. You don't give. Listen, I really believe that every Christian, every Christian has a job to do at the church. It is up to you to find out what your talent is. And it's up to you to use that talent to bring honor and glory to the Lord. If you're not using it, it's a waste. It's sin. God will forgive you. He will forgive you. Now, watch this. I want to show you how awesome God is. I'm going to tell you something, folks. If this don't light your show, your wood's all wet. <laughs> Here is nothing. nothing. What's your name, brother? Chris. Chris? That's your stand. I do. 
Hey, brother, what's your name? You're going to be leaving them? Josh. Josh, you're sin. Allison. Allison? Allison's sin. What's your name? Deanna. Who? Deanna. Deanna? Deanna? Sin. Pat, sin. Miss Pat. Preacher, sin. <laughs> <laughs> If everybody in this room that has sin in your life right now would say a prayer asking God to forgive you of that sin, He would hear your prayers and my prayers at the very same time and forgive us at the same time. That's how awesome God is. Amen? Amen. We serve a risen Savior and He's on His throne today and He hears and answers prayers. Amen? Amen? So let me ask you something. Do you know Jesus? Yes. If you do know Jesus, is your relationship pleasing to Him? Not to you, but it's pleasing to Him. Here's what God wants to do with all of our sin. What? I'll just hold it right here if I can. It gets kind of hot, but I'll do it. You'll be all right, baby. You'll be all right. Y'all ready? All that sin. All that sin. I put in the tub or the pan is gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Now, if you would, folks, back in close your eyes. Remember, as you're sitting out there in the pew today, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. That's what it's all about. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Let me ask you a question. You're sitting in these pews on these chairs this morning. If you were to die today, do you know for sure that when you die, you're going to heaven? Hey. If you know that for a fact, would you raise your hand? Raise them up high. Put them down. Now, they ain't put your eyes. Now, I know there's children in here, but I'm going to tell you something. There were some adults, some people in this room who don't know that fact. I'm going to tell you all something. Listen very carefully. You're here for a reason today. If you don't know Jesus, the reason why you're here is to accept Him. The Bible says this, that today is the day of salvation. You're not going to put it off. The Lord doesn't promise you a tomorrow. He doesn't promise you a next week. He doesn't promise you this afternoon. And I'm going to tell you right now, it would be a downright shame for you to walk out those doors not knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You say, well, I don't know how to accept the Lord. Let me help you with that. Number one, you've got to understand that you're a sinner. For all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. Number two, you've got to understand you need Jesus. For the way of the sin is dead. You're going to die one day. And when you die, you're going to go to a place called heaven or hell. Listen, so you're a sinner. You need Jesus. Now, all you got to do is tell the Lord that you're a sinner. All you got to do is confess that sin to Him. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. And He'll save you. The Bible says this in Romans 10 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what color skin you have. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, young or old. The Lord wants to save you. That's why He sent His Son, Jesus. Amen? Remember John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to save you, but you want to today, let me help you by saying this prayer. And if you want to accept Christ in your heart, why don't you say this prayer with me? Now you got to mean it. you got to mean it. The Lord knows your heart. I don't. Here's the prayer. If you want to accept the Lord. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Just like Bob. Just like Brother Dale. Jesus, today you showed me that I need you. That you're the only way to heaven. 
Jesus, right now, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. The sins I remember and the sins I don't remember. And right now, dear Lord, I'm asking you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, dear Jesus, for hearing my prayers. Today, I'm going to make you the boss of my life. Let me ask you all a question now. If you said that prayer with me just a second ago, asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, would you just very quietly raise your hand? I'm not going to come to you. I promise you that. But just raise them up high so I can see who you are. Raise them up high. I see you. Put them down. Now what we're going to do in a minute, those of you that had your hands raised, Brother Leroy is back there in the back. We're going to ask y'all to go see Brother Leroy. I don't care if you're a man, woman, boy, or girl. We're going to ask you to do that. And here's what they're going to do, kids and adults. They just want to talk to you about what you've done to see if you understand what you've done. Nobody's going to hurt you. If they do, just yell from Bubba, and I'll be back there on them like stink on a scum. But they're not going to hurt you. So if you said that prayer just with me just a second ago, getting saved, would you just very quietly stand where you are? Nobody looking but me and Brother Dad. Just stand up where you are. Children and adults. Oh, yeah, there you go. I see you, brother. Anybody else? Go see him, brother, if you don't mind. You go see him. Brother, you go too. Oh, yeah, we've got two men and a boy. Anybody else? Got a little girl going. Praise God. Anybody else? Oh, listen. You've got to be willing to stand for Jesus. If he saved you today, that's the greatest thing that will ever happen to you. Anybody else? All right, praise God for that four Christians. Let me ask you a question, Christian. Is your walk with the Lord pleasing to him? Or have you allowed sin to come into your life? And you're hanging on to it. Because you like it. It looks good, feels good, tastes good, smells good. Or have you replaced the Lord? Have you defrauded Him? You put your job before Him. You put your family before Him. You've lost the joy of salvation. And the Lord has showed you that. And you want to get right with the Lord today. Why don't you say this prayer to yourself if you want to? Nobody's twisting your arm. This is between you and the Lord. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I'm a Christian. I'm a saint. But Lord, I live like an ant. Oh, I come to church on Sundays, Wednesdays, but throughout the week, I don't read the Bible. I don't pray. I don't serve. I don't give. I don't witness, Lord. And Lord, you know the sin that's in my heart and life right now. The sin that is messing up my relationship with you. I've dethroned you, Lord. You're not number one in my heart and life anymore. But you know what is. Today, Lord, you've broken my heart about this stuff. Today, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me for allowing sin to come in and camp there. I'm asking you to forgive me for putting other things before you. Today, Lord, I repent of my sins. I turn back to you. I want to be used by you, Lord. Today, I'm going to put you back number one in my heart and life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer and forgiving me. Now, if you said that prayer with me, getting right with the Lord today, would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. I see y'all. I see you. Would you be willing to stand? Just stand where you are. Just stand up. I'm not going to come to you. Sometimes it's harder for an adult to stand, you know. It really is. But what we're going to do in a minute is this. When Brother Ty starts to sing, what's he going to sing, Brother? How. How. When he says how, 
And as soon as he says how, I don't want you to wait for the second word, word or the third word. As soon as he says how, I want you to go. And stand up here with the preacher. Because, folks, God has done a miracle in your life today. And that's something to brag about. And that's something to give him praise and glory about. Amen? It'll not only encourage the Lord, but it's going to encourage this church. So you don't want to be seated. The reason why I say come when he says how, we need to learn immediately to obey God. Amen? We drag our feet too much. We drag our feet gets into trouble. Revival has started, amen? amen. It started in the first service. It's continued in this one. It's going to continue tonight. God is good, amen? amen. Let's everybody stand. Pat, you come right here and stand. And as soon as he says how, you folks just come on. Give the Lord the prank and glory for it all. Do it, brother. Come on, man. charge us money to come up here. Uh, he doesn't make us pay him a, a salary. 
He comes on a love offering basis, which means when you pray and ask God what to give, out of your love for the Lord, you give that gift. You don't know God well enough to love Him to give Him anything right now. And I'm kind of worried about Wednesday night, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to support Him. No, I'm, I'm teasing. Whatever God tells you, see, when we pray and ask God the instructions, God will tell us. And, and when we obey, it gives God great glory. And it will be enough. Whatever you give, if you're given because God told you to, out of your love, relationship with God, it will be enough to minister to Bubba and his family and take care of those needs. So I, I want to ask you to pray. And as we pray together, we're going to ask God to tell us what to give to his ministry, to Bubba's adventures, and also to be faithful in giving our money to the church the way God tells us. Let me invite the ushers to come. If they would, I just need four guys. Uh, we, we have one less row than we used to to send them down. So we only need four. And uh, four is easier to count to than five. Let's bow together and let's pray. And ask God's blessing over our offerings that we give today. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us and providing us with things like jobs and work and and giving us money that we might serve you even with our money. Lord, I pray that you would lead us how to give today. To give to the church. And how much to give in order to obey you and bless Brother God, but how much to give in the law offerings. Lord, I pray that you would uh, speak to our hearts. And I pray that we'd be quick to obey. And then, Lord, I pray that you'd use all of this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Time is about number 5:30 tonight. Okay, we'll have a great time in the world.